Hello and welcome back to LTP, Learn to Paint with Mike. That is to say, I'm Mike and I'm learning how to paint and you're along with me. Today I'm going to continue doing some work on these blight wasps. Um, I believe the last video I made I had only done some uh, preliminary green work on the uh, wings. So I decided, and I actually kind of like the look of this, kind of really blighted and ugly and acidic. And ultimately, the uh, green mixture that I've got on here is just this fluorescent green, which doesn't even have a name. And then uh, I dry brushed on top of you know all the, the upraised surfaces, this mm, kiwi, apparently, is what it's called. Um, and I, while I was uh, working on one of my previous videos, I had started doing the uh, facing, uh, the front and rear arcs. And uh, so I went ahead and did that on all these because it was pretty simple to do because uh, I had the paint already. All right, so I'm going to continue working on these blight wasps. And uh, I'm primarily going to be doing the uh, flesh tones and the, the chitin tones uh, to get them to kind of a halfway decently painted state. Um, I'm actually going to be missing my journeyman, the final week six of, of my journeyman league, which I'm kind of sad about. Um, and I was really hoping that I'd be able to compete a little bit in the uh, the best painted. I was really hoping to get the best painted award for the journeyman. This is my first journeyman. Um, turns out I've let my um, what do you call this? Wet palette get dry. So I'm just going to kind of refresh it a little bit. Um, up just a little bit more, get a little more moisture under there. There we go. That should do it. Alright. So, we're going to begin putting the first layers of uh, this same brown that I've got right here which is all dried and unusable. Um, because I guess I probably just don't take good enough care of my wet palette. But it's this uh, traditional burnt sienna is the color. I'm going to put that on right here. And here we are. Now, I'm going to be using Probably this brush here. Um, in my previous videos I uh, already etched out the detail using a burnt umber color and now I'm gonna be going over all the uh, chitinous and hard, hard spots with this um, burnt sienna. Um, I'm gonna hit just the tips of these claws at the end of the uh, at the end of these legs I'm going to hit up those legs eventually with my flesh tones the uh, desert sand and bleached desert sand start here with these claws. There we go. Let's get that burnt sienna on all of those claws. Both on the, the inside and the outside. I'll load up my brush again because the top of this head plate is all going to be base coated in this burnt sienna. I'm going to hit the underside of this head plate. 
I'm not going to hit the jaws. I'm going to hit those the, the jaw and the teeth with... Actually, I'm going to hit this jawbone with the burnt sienna. But the teeth I'm going to do with uh, burgundy. Mostly a burgundy wash so that the inner portions get most of it. And here we are just painting this tough chitinous exoskeleton. Making sure I'm not getting any of this sienna paint onto my green wings. Uh, except for like that where I just totally sloshed it on there. Now I'm just going to take a paint brush with some water and essentially just erase that. Actually seemed to work pretty well. There we are. Get some more. Burnt sienna on there. Even on this belly. Pretty much. I'm painting the whole thing as though it is a tough chitinous mass. Which is kind of interesting because these, as a, as a unit on the table, these are actually pretty squishy. They uh, move quickly. They have a, a really good defense, but their armor values are just horrendous. And they only have five hit points each, so they they croak pretty quick. And that's the start of my light wasp pack. And I'll just be essentially doing the same for all four models in the unit. One, two, three, four, five, six. Claws all done. And now start with the head again. And the jawbone. One side and all along the other. This side. There we go. I think 
that's all the surface is done on that one. Here we are with number three. little pincers and claws. Now these guys don't have any rules for these little claws. They actually only have the one attack, the poisonous stinger. I imagine they use their claws for clinging to tree branches or Whatever, when they're tired of flying around. All right. Hit the headpiece again. Seems like a pretty good place to start on these models. Make sure we get the underside of the headpiece. Jawbone. Ooh, got a little bit up there on the teeth. So I'm going to use my little erasing technique. side and we'll hit up the other side Got a little bit sloppy up here side here. And get this side. There we are. All the chitinous portions have been base coated. One more waspy guy in this unit. I really like these black wasps. So when they were first released, I was kind of upset because I wasn't interested in playing a bug. You know, I, I like Everblight because it's an awesome dragon. I mean, yeah, a dragon from some other dimension, whatever, but still, dragon, big dragon wings, scary dragon breath. And so, when we got this War Beast pack and it was bugs, wasps, what's up with that? So I wasn't really interested when they were first released. But then in this uh, slow grow journeyman league, um, in week two, you have some more army points to play with, but they have to be battle group points, which means war beasts. So you go from your your starting war beasts and you have to add like 10 points and that's not enough to put in a 
a dragon or a big heavy carnivian or any of the other really dragony war beasts. So I was kind of stuck. At least kind of felt stuck. With either adding a rake, which I don't have a rake yet, and definitely I'm looking forward to getting one eventually. Or getting these blight wasps. And ultimately what made the decision was I went to my local gaming store because I like to purchase my models there uh, to support them because they give us a really fantastic place to play and some good terrain. Really support the, the culture. The, uh, the Journeyman League. They've really gone all out to support it. So I've been trying to support them with my dollars. Anyway, so what what really made the decision for me was that my local gaming store had the rakes right there on the shelf ready, or not the rakes, the blight wasps right there on the shelf ready to go, but they did not have a rake. And since I didn't want to wait for them to order in a rake, I went ahead and bought the blight wasps. And that's where the, the tale ends. That's why I have blight wasps, but I've been really happy with them. Um, with the, the starting warlock, Krissa, her feet gives everything plus five, all the, all the melee attacks, plus three strength, and it's an excellent force mul multiplier, and so having having a whole uh, war beast pack really makes that powerful. And then when I swapped to Absalonia 2, which I will show off my my model here, she's almost totally complete. Let's see if I can show that off a little bit. And with her, I decided to put a juniper tree on her base. Um, I've never been a fan of of, you know, really big stuff on the base, but she has such a big wingspan and kind of overhangs her base anyway, so I thought it would be appropriate. And she's she's a warcaster, and, and really, she's kind of my favorite model right now. So, adding a little extra on there seemed appropriate. Um, and her feet, as well, is a force multiplier, where you, uh, you add to the power, not to the, the strength, but to the power of all of, and of all of your melee attacks in the battle group, and their attacks gain a two-inch range, two-inch reach. And so, imagine this little stinger, and then Absalonia feats, and the stinger becomes two inches long. <laughs> That would be just absolutely terrifying. But they they perform so well that I'm willing to forgive their buggy look. Um, anyway, that's it for my video today. And uh, I'd like to uh, thank you for joining me today. If you like the video, please like it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. And uh, as always, here's my clever closing comment. Goodbye.